Good morning, everyone. I hope you're all doing well. This is David Hoffman from David's Bin here, coming at you from Davie, Florida. Today, I'm so excited because I'm here with Natasha from Trini Cooking with Natasha. So you're from Trinidad. Yes, I am. And you cook. Yes. Amazing. So what are we doing today? So today, we're going to be starting off with some doubles. Then we'll make paratha roti. Then we'll make some curry conch. We'll also make some curry ravioli with shrimp oh and gosh. a pork wallop. I am so pumped. It's 9.30 in the morning. I can't wait for doubles. We gotta start with doubles, yeah. right? But guess what? I have a surprise for you. I made you some Trinidad cherry coconut drops. It's like a coconut macaroon with cherries inside. It's really good. That's dessert, right? Yeah, it is. Okay, yeah. let's do it. Let's go inside. Yeah, let's start. So let's head on inside. Welcome to my home. Hello, how are you doing? This is my friend, Trishna. She's here to help me. Moral support. <laughs> hey, how's everything? Good, how are you? Very good. Are you from Trinidad too? No, my family's from Guyana. I'm going in July. Um, actually burpees. I'm gonna go the whole country, so we'll talk about it. <laughs> so, as I told you, I made the drops. And guess what? I made them bigger than I usually make them. And I'm telling, oh my god, I was like panicking. This is not the usual size. But it came out really well. I wanted to surprise you with something different. So let's start by making the paratha. I'm gonna take my bold out dough. Um, we're gonna start with one. It's nice and soft, but not too soft. We're gonna sprinkle some dry flour so that it doesn't stick to our surface and start opening it out. <laughs> this is a regular paratha, right? Yeah, this is the flaky one that you get. Let's open it out. Not too big, because mm. we're gonna make a cone. Oh, you're making a cone? Yeah. So we're gonna create the layers that paratha is known for. So just about there is good. And here I have my butter and Crisco. And Crisco. So vegetable shortening and butter. That's it. You have to use that. Some people like using ghee, but you would not get the same consistency and texture. So you're going to paste a thin layer over the entire dough. Now everyone asks me about this next step. Why right. do we do? So the next step is just adding a dusting of dry flour and I don't know why but that's how I learned it. Make a cut from the center outwards and now we're going to roll into a cone. And this is creating layers, you see? Mm -hmm. And that's how you get the paratha layers. Then you bring this piece in here. That looks good. Right? And then you press down on the top. And that's one lawyer. So this needs to rest at least about an hour. I like to do it sometimes a couple of hours or overnight. But today we're just winging it. So let's see how long we can get it to rest and we'll prepare the other things and we'll cook this last. It's amazing. The parata. Yeah. The only thing I'm not making for you is something barfi related, which is an Indian dessert. Yeah, no worries. So I'm known as the Barfi Queen. The Barfi Queen, no way. Chachna, I make everything Indian dessert. It's a Barfi, which is a milk square. Mm -hmm. And I take that flavor and I flavor other things with it. So Barfi ice cream. No, I, lo I love Barfi, it's very flaky, like uh, the crumbles. Yeah. So we're making six paratas. It takes literally like 40 seconds for her to finish each one, right? Yeah. Something like that. Just to wrap it, yeah. And then you let it sit for an hour. Usually it's overnight. Yeah. Okay. The longer you let it sit, the silkier roti you get. The silkier? Yes. Yeah, oh my gosh. Nice. <laughs> this is going to be so good. This with some curry conch. Yeah. <sighs> and I'm cooking my conch in a different curry. I see you've eaten it with a more of a yellow curry. Mm -hmm. So I like it dark. So I'm going to give you that. Dark we go. But my parents were born in Venezuela, my mom's Italian, my mom is Hungarian. Congrats, you know? you're going to get your gold. I got my gold, my gold, yes, one million, one million. I know, I know. You know, it takes I a few months to get. I so good to get mine. Oh, I know. And, you know, I have a way to go together. You, getting gold, I, I was reading, uh, you know how many people have gold in the world? How many? 23,000. Wow. That's it. That, that's that's yeah. huge. This is a damn paper towel. It's just to keep the dough from drying out because it's going to dry out and create this kind of crust on the top and we don't want that and then i'll still put the plastic wrap just like this i'm going to lock in some moisture and let me go get a tea towel so we have a tea towel which we call a root cloth in trinidad and we're just going to cover it just to make sure not too much air gets in there so it can rest 
So we'll set this aside and allow it to rest and we'll work on something else. So let's prepare the doubles vara. So here we have all purpose flour, salt, yeast, sugar, turmeric and baking powder. And we're gonna mix it all together and then add some lukewarm water. Now this mixture has to be somewhat soft but also manageable. So once you mix everything in really well, we're gonna add in some lukewarm water. Mix. And you're looking for a soft to medium dough. And I don't like the bar like to be very yellow, so I just put a little bit of turmeric in there. Mm-hmm. Look at that. How you mix it. Yeah. So I'm just trying to get it dry. Yeah, it's like pancakes, same thing. Yeah, just a little thicker. So you mix the wet with the dry. You can see how the, the flour is starting to change from that really sticky and now because you just add a little bit of dry flour if it's too sticky for you. And this is the kneading part where it's not so sticky and you knead it. And sometimes I do this. It's just different techniques. No, now it's perfect. Yeah, Ooh, look how thick that is. So pull it apart. Yeah, so let's get some oil. That's oil? Yeah. Just regular vegetable oil. And it's gonna help us So good. Look at that. It's intense, huh? Yeah. It's like labor of love right there. Mm -hmm. Some people make their bar do the night before. Once you knead this really well, you can use it within 10 minutes. When they make the batter, they literally drop it into the oil for 10 seconds and yes. then it's done. Or less. Or less, yeah, <laughs> yes. yeah. It's so yes. quick. It's like the oil has to be piping hot. I can't wait to try all the chutneys. Go on the table. Go on the table. And have a look. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, too many. Right, so we're done here. Okay. I'm gonna wash my hands and we'll leave this to rest for a little. Yeah, so how long do you let it rest for? Maybe 10 minutes. So this is just a damp paper towel again, just so that the top of it doesn't dry out while it's resting. So I'm gonna set this aside and let's work on something else. So we're doing steps. So this chickpea, you soak it overnight. And I also put in some dal or split peas because it adds some body to the chana and it gives it that distinct flavor and taste. So now we have to actually add flavor and seasonings to the chana because it's just basic with salt. So let's add, this is culantro shadow benny, um, some garlic and some pimento peppers or seasoning peppers. Now everyone makes their doubles chana differently. This is just my recipe. If you didn't know what culantro was, it's basically a warmer cilantro, right? It's like a cousin of cilantro. And we use it in almost everything in Trinidad. Oh, everything. Every single dish has culantro. Add in some papa seasoning. And chara masala, so important. So, a teaspoon, jira. We're gonna add in a pinch of turmeric powder. Oh, it smells so good. Yeah, so not a whole lot. So you wanna give this a good mix. You can smell the flavor coming out of there. It's yeah. crazy, the turmeric, the, the shadow benny really just like enhances flavor. Yes. Just brings out so much of everything. Oh, it's gonna be too good. I just don't wanna get too full on the doubles. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm gonna have to have a quad. A little bit a of quad, A quad, a quad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's like, you I, know. I always have a triple. You always have a triple? Yeah, I could never have just a basic double. No, no, you have to. So for me. Always want, add one more. One more butter. Yeah. For me, I want a little more turmeric. Okay. See, I just eyeball everything. It's good. That's what true chefs do, right? Yeah, you mix it in. Stick to my profession, okay? She's a teacher. <laughs> oh, are you? Yeah. Perfect. See, it's not too thick and it's not too runny. Mm -hmm. That's what you want. Because as this cools, it's going to thicken. And you don't want like really, really thick chana. You want it to be nice and runny. This is finished, we're gonna leave it covered. It's gonna stay nice and warm in here for us. And let's see. Let's chunk it some conks. Conk is my favorite. I've never had conk yes, like conch. I've had in Trinidad. Yes, conk. 
not conk. Conks. Conk, conk. <laughs> okay, so we have our conk, we have a pot. So let's put it up on a medium heat and add in some oil. We're going to toast some spices and we're going to toast some aromatics. Some cumin seeds. The oil is not hot yet. And some fenugreek, we call this meaty. So we're gonna let that toast until it turns dark brown. Don't let it burn. So let's add in some aromatics, some scallions. I have a few curry leaves in here. I have oh, yes. ones. And some onions. You can put peppers if you want to, but we're gonna omit the peppers. And we're gonna drop this in and be careful. And this needs to saute until it starts to turn light brown in color. Doing this step adds so much more flavor. Yeah. Yeah, you want as much flavor as you can get. I mean, curry leaves, that's my jam. Curry leaves all day. I would literally just eat a whole handful of curry yeah. leaves, you know? You're kidding. I have a plant oh. outside. You have a plant outside? Yeah. After this, I'm eating some of it. No, it's like mint, you know? Just take it and eat. Yeah. Basil, same thing. Just take it and eat. So now that it's brown, it's time to add in some curry. Some curry. So we're doing a dark curry, as I said. So I like... Uh, like a duck and goat curry. Mm -hmm. It's a darker curry powder. I'm gonna go in with two of these, so like two tablespoons. And I always mix it with a mild curry. Oh, so you mix? Yeah. And you want your heat to be on low when you're cooking curry because you don't want to burn it. Mm. So now we're toasting this for about a minute. Wow, it's like caramelizing in there. And it's gonna start to feel greeny. Once it starts to feel greeny, then you'll know, okay, it's time to add some water. This is gonna be heaven. <laughs> the smell, the aroma. Oh, I can literally just get a spoon and go into that alone. No, it's not. No, I know, I know, I know. I'm gonna add a little more of the yellow. Yeah, this is how I cook. Just get a little bit and a little bit. Yeah, a little bit and a little bit. Because, you know, as you're cooking, once you're custom cooking, you're gonna be like, mm, no, we need a little more, you know? Mm hmm, of course. Citrini cooking. Love it. Wow, that looks so good. It looks, it reminds me of a duck curry or a goat curry. Yes. And for me, when you cook conk in this curry, oh, it's going to be so good. <laughs> Amazing. Trust me. I trust you because the two <laughs> conks dishes that I had over there, the curry conks, like I fell in love. Yeah. Right away, they were the top dishes. Okay. I had some of the best food I ever had in my life in Trinidad, to mm -hmm. be honest with you. Our food is so good and you guys have to visit to try it. It's underrated, not a lot of people know about it. We need more people finding out about our food and making it. And now you can get all of our products on Amazon. Oh yeah? yeah. All, all these ingredients? Yeah, Perfect. you can get it on Amazon. So it's easier to find now. Uh, yeah. yeah. So many subscription boxes out there. Even my company does one quarterly. Okay, nice. And they send you all of the spices. You get an entire box full of spices. So you see what's happening now mm -hmm. is it's starting to fry up, right? And you see the oils start separating. Yeah. That's what you want. And the curry has thickened. So you want to cook out the water until it starts to turn into this thick paste. Mm -hmm. You know what it reminds me of this type of curry is more like a, like so in India, it'll be like a beef fry. Yeah. So it is going to be like almost like a conch fry. Yeah. So it's, it's a... But it's still going to be saucy. It's still going to be saucy, but it's still going to be like a, almost like a drier yeah. um, curry, right? Now that it's nice and thick like this let's add in our conch which we already seasoned with our green seasoning and some aromatics <laughs> so we're gonna mix this in here and we're gonna let this bungee down now bungee down is a term that we use um it means you're gonna let the protein cook it's gonna release its natural juices and we want that juice to dry up and it's gonna intensify the flavor and then you'll add water for it to cook. <laughs> I cannot wait to eat this dish. And it's it's like a, a tropical curry, you know, like yeah. so tropical. Oh, so you're going to leave it there on a high heat? Yes, okay. we want it to bunge it down and you have to do that on a high heat. So. Okay, so we just leave it here and for how long? Um, on time, oh, time is, is up to the... Up depend, to the depending, yeah. so can I stir it a little yeah. bit? And stir it. And as long as it's not releasing a lot of moisture or a lot of its natural juices, it's mm. gonna finish faster. Okay, got it. Up, yeah. So that's the natural juices that I told you about. And that's why we keep it on high, because now we need this to dry down completely okay. before we add any additional water for it to cook. This is gonna lock in so much flavor. 
Like you wouldn't think, oh my God, it was dry at first when we put it in, right? Mm -hmm. And now look at how much liquid is in here. It's crazy. It looks like she just dropped in a whole glass of water, but she didn't. It's just that's all the moisture coming out of the conch, right? Yeah. Of the pot, so now you have to keep your eye on it uh, and keep turning them. It's crazy the smell that's coming out of there. Wow, what a mix of flavors, huh? So when this is finished, we're gonna throw it into the instant pot, or you can use your pressure cooker. We want to tenderize the meat because it does take some time to cook. It. And we want David to get lunch today. <laughs> I need breakfast. <laughs> well, yeah. Or brunch, brunch, brunch. brunch, brunch. At this yeah, point, it's brunch. brunch. It's already at 10.30. We're not gonna eat for another hour, at least. At least, right? As soon as we're done, we're gonna start working on the doubles, and then we can munch on the doubles in the meantime. Two bites, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> it's almost ready. I'm gonna turn it off because we don't want to burn it. And let's put it aside. And let's get our instant pot ready. And we just bungeed it on the stove and now we're going to add it to our instant pot. Perfect. This is just gonna help the conch cook faster. So we can have lunch on time. So what exactly does the Instant Pot do to this conch? It's gonna tenderize it. Got it. It can stay on your stove and it can cook, cook, cook for hours sometimes. It doesn't take very long to get tender. Mm. I would eat that right there. If I shouldn't, right? You probably could because it was sauteed. So I'm gonna add some water to this bowl that we had it in. Now remember, we had the raw conch in here, but this is still going to cook on. Cause this is how we do it. So we want to see if all of that flavor. Mm -hmm. So you don't lose any of it. Oh, you want to taste the sauce? I'm tasting. I'm tasting it. For that. Yeah. No, don't take the meat. Just take the sauce. The sauce. Yeah. I guess I wanted more. <laughs> oh my god. So we'll taste it for salt. Wow! After. Oh, it's perfect. Okay. <laughs> it's good. So let's add some water. Mm hmm. And when you're using the instant pot teaching you guys how to use an instant pot. <laughs> Don't put too much of liquid in here when you're cooking your conch. So you just want to barely cover the meat. That's how much water you need in there, not a lot. Right? And then cover. And pressure cook. Let's do 10 minutes and then we'll check it out. We can always put it for another 10 minutes. I just don't want it to overcook. That's gonna cook and we'll do something else in the meantime. So we're gonna make some shrimp wontons already pre-seasoned because you want to lock in flavor. So I did this overnight so you get the flavor of the, the seasonings with the shrimp. And we're famous for green seasoning. We have green seasoning and our pimentos in here with some Chinese seasoning. We have the water. This is just to help us seal the wonton. So we're gonna take a skin and they can do this with minced chicken. So yeah, you take your shrimp and now this is how I fold. I was generous with the shrimp. Mm -hmm. Fold this piece back. Wow, it's beautiful. Right, so this is just my way of folding it. There is another way. I know of one other way. For me, I find it takes a little longer. That looks great. How do they do it? Oh yeah, I remember. Then they would, you see when you bend it back, it starts to crack. Mm -hmm. Perfect. But I like my way. Your way looks better. <laughs> it, just, it just looks like, I don't know, it just looks better in terms of the, the appearance, right? So I'll just fill enough so you can have a taste. This looks so good. It's amazing. Yeah. Watching put together, I mean, just mesmerizing. To be honest with you, like for me, the food's so much tastier after I watch it being made. Yeah. I don't, like sitting down, it just comes to my table, okay. But when I see this, just, it get, you get ready for it, right? I yeah. always say Trinidad Chinese is the best. Trinidad Chinese is the yeah, best. I love our Chinese. Oh yeah, Guyana. <laughs> Guyana Chinese. I've never had right, it, so, uh, so you know, I can't see. Mm -hmm. Look at that, so the wonton, shrimp wonton, guys. Beautiful. It's a perfect fold. Nice. Very nice. These are gonna fry pretty quickly. Under a minute. Um, the shrimp is gonna cook. Um, it has been minced, so it's not like a whole piece of shrimp in there that you have to worry. Mm -hmm. It's gonna cook quickly too. So let's drop them into the hot jacuzzi. You don't want it to be like too hot where it burns as soon as you drop it in. Mm -hmm. And these same wontons, you can take them and make wontons and garlic sauce. Oh wow. And I think you had that in Trinidad. Mm -hmm. 
I've had so many styles of wontons. It's not slippery, it's went straight down. Oh yeah, because okay. it's fried, the other one steamed. It's is soft. steamed, yeah. It's really soft. What you can do with this too is when you finish fry it, you can make Hong Kong wontons. That's where you take fried wontons and then you, you set that aside, you saute ginger and garlic with some um, sweet peppers and onions and hot peppers. Oh wow. In a wok, and then you throw in the the wontons, and you just toss everything. Yeah, see the best way to like mix the flavors into it, right? Yeah. By doing that, yeah. So like when I was in uh, Northeast India, we did a lot of like spicy wontons, like this, like just like they fry it, yeah, and throw into another wok yeah. with the sauce, you know. Yeah. I'm ready. The pork wallop that I'm gonna make for you, it's I don't think you had it. It's from this place called South Pork in Trinidad, and I had theirs, and I'm like, oh my god, I have to recreate this. So that's something I do. I go to a restaurant or go somewhere and I see something and I like it, I'll try to deconstruct it and then come home and recreate it. So. That's like the perfect wonton, not overly cooked, but, yeah. it's just nice and crisp and it's still really, really hot. So we're gonna heat the oil for the doubles. Look how beautiful the barra flour looks. Wow. Just gonna add some oil to my hand that's our conch we'll let that rest for a little and then we'll come back to it so you let it rest for a little yeah she's gonna do like a slow release instead of opening it and letting all of the steam come out she's gonna like let it slowly come out and so we're going to break the barra right so right. you have to have a nice smooth surface and you're gonna grease it because it's gonna stick if you don't add some oil and i like it really smaller i love how you guys do that right there just pop a little circle out and we're gonna continue doing that let's make a couple i make this it's probably how much less than two inches i would say and when it opens out it opens out so thin and it's going to be like a perfect size you know everyone has their own size that they they work with but this is the size i always make mine and these when you break the balls you still need to let them rest slightly because you know the gluten forms tension mm -hmm. so how many are you making like what's the count? We're doing pairs, right? Yeah. So two, four, well, one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's do six. Six. We'll, yeah, we'll just do some. Right, and we're gonna put the rest, just rest this aside, and we can always make some more. We want the, the temperature of the oil to be like screaming hot, so it's not there yet. And I'm not gonna open out the, the bar yet until we know the oil is screaming hot. So let's make the doubles bar. You're gonna take the one, and we're gonna open it out nice and thin. And this is why you need the oil. You mm -hmm. see how it helps you open out? Mm -hmm. And then, you can almost see through. Yeah. Almost, and then, look how fast it's gonna fry, right? Into the oil. One, two, three, flip. One, two, three, and it's done. It's done, is it? Yeah. Because it's really, really thin. You want to put it in something that keeps it nice and warm and also drains the oil. So we're going to make how many baras? You said like, uh, um, so six, so six, so huh? six doubles, so 12 six. baras. Yeah. Yeah, so roughly it's going to take us less than 10 minutes. That's how fast this is. You yeah. know, it takes her, let's say 10 seconds, 15 seconds to, to like roll it out. Six seconds in there. Look at that. It's amazing how it's so, so like, it's almost like the bature. Yes. Very, very similar. Very it similar. basically came from it, right? Yeah, and we, we just, it evolved into something different when it came to Trinidad. You know, food evolves. Mm -hmm. That's what I love about Trinidad, it's such a mix. Yeah, you see, you can still see the yellow color, mm -hmm. but it's not like overpowering yellow. I like my bar a little on the puffy side. Mm -hmm. So not thin, 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 and not fat, but just in between. So we're done here, let's just close it down. We want to keep that that heat, that um, steam in there so the bar gets nice and soft when we're ready for it. So let's do something else. What's next? Um, how about let's make the curry ravioli. Let's do it. Okay, so I have curry ravioli. So you're talking about like a Trini Indian Italian. Yeah. This is mushroom ravioli and then she's gonna make curry uh, shrimp. shrimp on top. Then a coconut curry sauce. What? Yeah. You didn't tell me this? It's a coconut curry sauce. Ah, coconut curry is the best. It's gonna taste really good. So I came up with this recipe. I've never seen it anywhere before and I'm, I was like, we make curry crab and dumpling, right? And sometimes you don't wanna make the dumpling because you have to need flour. So try ravioli, it's the same flour. And it came out really well. Add some oil. We're gonna add in some 
human. Always. Yeah, when start and again the meaty, the fenugreek. Mm -hmm. And now we're gonna let that toast on low. Let's bring it all into the oil. The curry for this ravioli is gonna be this nine spice curry. The flavor from this is so different from a regular basic mild curry. And we're gonna use some coconut milk powder. Um, you can use coconut milk if you had it, but we, if you have it, but we don't, so we're gonna use the powder. So we're gonna add the curry, and you want your heat to be on low. So it's gonna be like a mild curry, not too much of curry for this. Mm -hmm. Let it toast, feel grainy. Mm -hmm. Then we'll add the water after. Definitely thick, right? So just let it toast for about a minute. It'll start to feel grainy. Then add in water. Now cook down the curry until it turns into that paste. So you'll notice that when you're cooking curry, it's like the same process. You toast first, then you add the water, then you let it thicken, let it turn into a paste, then you add your protein or your veggie. So this is going to simmer until it thickens. Then we'll drop in the shrimp. Okay. Yeah. So this is gonna simmer until it thickens and then we're gonna add the shrimp. This food is gonna be unreal. Yeah. Like, you're blowing my mind with this dish. Let's add in the shrimp. And I always say, save your seasonings from your bowl. Mm -hmm. Right now, we want to let this bungee down. Fry up in here. It'll re release its natural juices again. Now shrimp takes not a long time to cook mm -hmm. and we don't want to overcook the shrimp right so what i'm going to do is drop my ravioli you can use any one you like this mm -hmm. is a mushroom ravioli i prefer this over just plain cheese now we're not going to boil this for long let's add our coconut milk powder to this oh wow It's gonna be super coconut. Yeah. Coconutty. Oh yes. It literally just like binds into it, right? Yeah. And I'll add some water to create a sauce. Mm-hmm. Nice gravy. Yeah. So by the time the shrimp is ready, we'll just drop in the ravioli. Looks too good. The gravy. And then you'll start to see that creamy sauce. Yeah, it's not as brown. Mm-hmm. It's actually very yellow. And then man. you can also add more coconut milk if you wanted to. Oh yeah, more? Yeah, you can add more. Right, now let's drop the ravioli in here. Mm -hmm. So you just don't boil it for long because you don't want it to, you know, fall apart. Because mm -hmm. it's going to continue to cook in this sauce. This is going to be amazing. Mm. I think it's going to be so good. Alright, now just toss and we're going to allow it to cook and the sauce will thicken and coat the ravioli with that delicious coconut sauce. Now this sh the shrimp had salt already in it so we'll always taste and adjust after. Mm -hmm. So the seasonings from the, sh the shrimp will season the sauce. So this just needs like a minute and it will be done. That's it? Yeah. I'm trying it. Yeah. Mm. Mm. I can taste the shrimp already. Yeah. Ooh, a little spicy. I don't think I put any. No? Peppers. No. Maybe I feel some spices. Maybe from the curry because Maybe. that nine spice curry. Yeah. It's like a warming heat. Yeah. It's not so bad. Right, so we want a little sauce for this. So as this cools, it's going to thicken further. So I'm, this is finished. So we're going to set this aside. And I think we should check on the curry conch. That's a curry conch. Now can I try it, please? <laughs> uh, I'm sure you can. You see, it, you see how saucy it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, try a piece. Uh, your finger. Take your finger. My finger. Yeah. How tender. Mm. Perfect. Okay, so you see how saucy we need to dry that down. So I'm going to put it on saute, start on high. So it's just going to thicken up that sauce for us. What is that called? A tower. Tower. So a griddle. We call it a tower. Now, if you go on Amazon, you can actually type T-A-W-A, -A, tower, and I'll find you one. For this pork wallop, we're gonna also have fries, right? Fried yeah. fries. It's gonna be like... Not French fries. 
Yeah, Trini it's fries. It's French fries, Trini style. French fries, Trini style? Yeah. This is the pork that I fried. It's seasoned with Chinese seasoning and some soy sauce. And you just let it marinate overnight and you fry it up the next day. And we're gonna slice it into strips. Looks good. Yeah, and you could do this with any type of protein you like. And you could also make it vegan and do tofu. I'm gonna do one, we'll just slice up one piece for now. Yeah, it's fine. Right. All right. Let's put this into our bowl. So just some chives, just to make it look pretty. That's it? Yeah. Okay, let's cook one of the roti. It's gonna be soft because it was resting. And you can see it's nice. It's not dried out at the top. You don't want it to be dried out because then it gets cracked up. So you wanna flour and press. And you always wanna press the ends thinner because you want nice thin ends. Mm, that gong smells really good. It smells amazing. Okay, time to roll it out. It's perfect. Mm. Oh, roadie, dahi puri. So someone commented and said, Natasha, you need to teach him it's not roadie, it's roti. Roti. Roti, yeah. Do I say it that bad? <laughs> Rody. No, it's, it's roti. Roti. Yeah, roti. A roti. Done? Yeah, so this I'm going to cancel, turn it off, and this is finished. I'm just going to add a little bit of oil so that the roti doesn't stick. And this is what we call dabala. So I have a metal and a wooden, and this is what used to get licks with long time. Enjoy mm. that. It's time to cook. Now you let it cook like for about 20 30 seconds till you see bubbles forming. Now, because this stove is different, um, you'll notice that the outer end of the roti needs some help to cook, so I'll bring it to the center. So we have to adjust when, when we're working with different tools. Yeah, and I can touch the tower because wow. I'm accustomed. Wow, it's so fast, huh? And a thin layer of oil on the side. Let this roti is so quick. Roti, roti, not roti. <laughs> I mean, they have to understand, you know, different um, countries would pronounce our foods differently, just as we would pronounce other countries' foods differently. And now bubbles up like a puri. Yeah. And now I'm going to, like, bring it to the center. We want the ends to cook. Like that? Yeah. You see? Mm -hmm. so, I'll just keep doing this to make sure that the ends cook because you want to do this over medium low heat because if it's too high mm -hmm. then the roti will get stiff then you bring it together like this and hit this is how you create that boss up shot and those layers if you ever visit Guyana they call it clap roti Clap roti. Yeah, they're going to hold this in their hand and clap it like this. That's what they do in Kerala. In yeah. India, they do it like that. It's called, it's called a porota. P-O-R-A-T-T-A. This is done. Okay, it's done? Yep. So I'm just going to put this aside. I'm going to wrap it to keep it warm. Look at the layers. It's still soft, you know? But imagine leaving it the, um, the amount of time that it needs. And it's, it will be perfect. It's beautiful. Pork wallop with french fries. It's gonna be good. Yep. <laughs> I'm starving. Oh this is like, this is wetting my appetite. Sesame oil is usually a finishing oil, but I'm a Trini, so I do what I want, right? Um, and then we're gonna go in with a little bit of avocado oil. Um, I'm just gonna drop the heat. I don't want it screaming, screaming hot. And we're gonna go in with some fresh ginger and garlic. Before that starts to burn, drop in your aromatics. Lots of flavor in there. I mean, yeah. the aromatic coming out of there. Season with a little salt. Mm. <coughs> I'm sorry. Season with some Chinese seasoning salt. And let's get the pork in. Right, so I'm just gonna let the, the pork warm up, warm through a little. So now toss in the fries. Oh wow. And then you just I mean 
packed, yep. packed barbecue sauce. That's like that Chinese seasoning, right? Yeah. <laughs> And but, the pepper. And the pepper. Yeah, I mean, I love this though. Look, it's like a stir fry, pork stir fry yeah. with French fries. I mean, it smells amazing. Yeah. Mm. And we're done. We're done? Yeah, that's it. You see how fast I came together? It's amazing. Really quick. You can make this with shrimp, you can make this with chicken. It's like a one pot meal that you can impress your guests with. And we're done. Okay. Time to try all the food. I'm starving. <laughs> we had five minutes left. Wow, that was good. All right, so I'm going to try it. Oh, it's hot. Is it too it. hot? Yeah, just blow it. Mmm. Oh, wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like a stir fry that I've had like in Chinese restaurants. Mm-hmm. Mm, but a little different. Spicy. Mm hmm You get the fries. Wow. So if you want to learn how to make it, I mean, you saw, if it's just basically seasoning your pork with Chinese seasoning and some soy, fry it, and then follow the rest of steps. Super easy. We are finally ready. This is exciting. We have so many amazing things. I think two of them I have never tried. So the mm. curry ravioli and also the, the pork, pork wallop. Yeah. yeah, so what do you want to start with first? Breakfast? Breakfast, of course. We have to. Okay, so put it in. Yeah, two bar. Then two, well, one and two. Oh, okay. Yeah, put it. Okay. This. And put the channel. Chan on top. Just enough, right? Yeah, how much do you want? And I'll put a little more, put a little more. Perfect. Now you will, I'll bring that for you. Yes. Get the condiment. So we have pepper sauce. And you know in Trinidad, we have to use one spoon mm -hmm. for all the sauces, right? Exactly. So let's start with... Uh, yeah, just go straight in, right? This is the shadow benny sauce. Bandania sauce. It has a little pepper in there. Okay. The tamarind sauce. You're doing it nice. And... In Trinidad, they just like... <laughs> one place. And the pepper sauce. Oh my sauce. gosh. And... Of course, cucumber. Yeah. Oh, the cucumber salad, very nice yeah, and crunchy. Oh, I'm perfect. Okay. That's great. So that's our doubles. Okay. So you if you add one more to it, you'll get a triple, and you add four, you get a quad. A quad. So some people do like two or three doubles, mm -hmm. so it almost makes sense to get a quad. Yeah. And that's it. Mm -hmm. it just gets hard because it's a filling, right? Sometimes you, you get so much chana that the barra isn't enough to eat all that chana well for me. <laughs> yeah. So you always got the bottom one first, yeah, right? Pull it over the top. Mm -hmm. And then you just pick up, try oh. to get a little bit of everything. Oh my gosh, this is so good. This is amazing. And then you bite. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> mm hmm. Mm hmm. Oh, the shadow bunny. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Nice spice. Yeah. Mm, so fluffy. Mm hmm. So good. Mm -hmm. So good. You guys have to try this. I love this. Mm -hmm. But you know what? I'm going to get some more of the sauces. I think some more spice. Right? Yeah, My for two. me, heavier on the sauces. Yeah, yeah. Always heavier on the sauces, right? Mm -hmm. Like, wow. Look at this. And then it just starts like, just coming out. Eat, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm telling her, just not sure get to eat. Mmm. Mmm. All the sweetness, the, the spice together. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. Oh my gosh, what an amazing breakfast. And you know I love yeah. the heat level. Mm -hmm. If you want to go crazy, you could. Yeah. You don't have to though. Mm -hmm. mm. I can sell? Oh, <laughs> doubles 305. Doubles 305, yeah. we'll start it. Wow, at the very end, just pick it up, right? There it is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm. That's why I need an extra bar all the time. Yeah, yeah, because it always falls out. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you don't want to get a whole other bar, because obviously very heavy in carbs, just go in and do like this. Mm -hmm. You're going to throw it away. Very easy. Oh, it's amazing. Spice. Whoo. Love the chickpeas. Mm hmm So fire. Like, so much flavor in there. Okay, I'm going to have to hold off on another double. Yeah, let's try something else. Let's try something else. What do you want to try? Conk? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Everything you'll taste separately. And then you can have the roti, so let's just switch this around for you. So we have the paraka, also known as boss up shot, and your curry kong. We'll do the wontons now. Look, I, I, I want to do both, right? So I'll do wontons, <laughs> yeah, literally just the dip them, dip them in, right? Yeah. Like that. So I put a little mm. bit of hot sauce in there. Mm, that's nice and thick. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mmm. Mmm. It's still crunchy. 
so packed with shrimp. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love this. Mm -hmm. So it's a mix of ketchup, ketchup, pepper sauce, and shadow benny sauce. And a shadow benny. I was gonna say you have a little bit of a spice, but and it's soy. amazing. And oh. I put in some soy sauce in there. Oh, I'll just drown it. Yeah. Huh? Me, I would put scorpion pepper in it because I love my scorpion pepper. Oh my gosh, you like heat? Mm-hmm. Mm. Not for everything, certain things. <laughs> I'm gonna have to hold out for that. Yeah. It's too good. So, he's gonna try the conk. So put it up, look at this. This is the roti. Yeah, roti. You guys, he's saying it right. Yeah, and I'm doing it right. So you're supposed to do it one hand like this, you know? That's a true Indian way. Yeah. And then go in here, like that. Wow. I can't wait for this bite. Mmm. Kong's amazing, but this is so good. So flaky. Mmm. -hmm. Mm. So many layers. Oh, wow, the conch. Got that sweetness in the coconut? Yeah. And also, you can put coconut milk in conch if you wanted to. Mm -hmm. Remember, this has the coconut milk. This oh. one we didn't. Oh, this one didn't. Sorry, sorry. But we can put coconut milk if you wanted to, but I didn't want to take away from mm. that flavor. We have curry leaves in this one, though. Yeah. Okay, okay. I'm like thinking, what would you put in it? That's just yeah. too many things, you know? Yeah, we did the aromatics with the onion and the peppers and the curry leaves and the scallions. This is unreal. Another one of my top conch dishes ever. Yeah. Ever. It's just incredible. And it's all fresh, right? So you get yeah. everything fresh basically from this market nearby, yeah. right? Everything. The, the conch was like living when I got it. <laughs> living when you got it? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Friend, cheers. Cheers. Thank cheers. Thank you so much. No, thank you. Hey, cheers, cheers. Cheers. Solo Apple J. Solo Apple J. Yeah. Whenever you have doubles, you have this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. That one sounds great. What we got next? Um, the wallop. The wallop. No, do the curry. Seeing that you just did curry. Okay. Yeah. So right here? Yeah. Okay. So the coconut curry shrimp ravioli. Together, right? Yeah. Oh my god. Okay. Whoa. It's amazing. Yeah. Mmm. I've never had curry with ravioli before. Wow. It's like and a marriage made in heaven. Yeah, and it's really, Perfect. really, really good. The first time I did it, I'm like, wow. Mmm. Wow. And then adding the shrimp yeah. just adds a whole nother level, mm -hmm. you know? So seafood mixed with that. So yeah. really it was like a veg, almost veg. Yeah. Then you added the non-meat. Yeah. Right? Because I was thinking. Non-veg. Non non-veg. Non-veg. <laughs> non <-veg. laughs> non <-veg. laughs> I was thinking this is a good, a good dish for a Salt Beach Seafood Festival. Oh. Mm. Let's get our own tent and let's just go down there. Yeah. This is amazing. And this is like one of the best pasta dishes I've had okay. in a long time. Nice. I am gonna finish it. Nice. I'm glad you like it. Mmm. So. I'm Italian, so. Mm hmm. Pasta is like in my blood. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. Nice. Because I remember I told you the pasta, I wanted to use that particular brand because the others tend to overcook. Mm -hmm. And I don't like pasta when it gets like mushy. You know, you still want it to be like al dente. Exactly. No, it's perfect. Yeah, it has to be al dente. It can't be too soft, mm -hmm. not too hard. I have to have one more bite, at least one more. Yeah. I'm, I'm really, really happy you liked it. And I tried to do two things that you didn't have before. Oh my gosh. It's, an, it's like so mouth-watering that I want to eat more. I'm gonna give you to take. Take it away. <laughs> take it away. Pack it to go. <laughs> Last one? Yeah. Wow. All right, so the wallop. Yes, so the wallop is inspired by salt pork. I did not invent it, so I just want to put that out there. Mm -hmm. um, you guys saw you tossed aromatics and you put in the pork. Mm -hmm. um, you could use chicken and then you put in your oh, fries so and you put your barbecue sauce. I like the, everything. the fries is a nice twist. Yeah. Because it's it changes like the textures completely, right? Mm -hmm. So we have this nice crunch with the vegetables. Yeah. You have the nice texture of the pork and it's tender. Mm -hmm. But then you have that extra softness slash crispiness. Yes. That's it's fries. and it's been soaking this uh, this gravy. So yeah, 
And if you eat it hot, you know, the fries would be crispier. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it's the perfect meal put together. So, mm -hmm. you know, you're hanging out and you want something different to eat. I mean, this with a beer? Yeah. It's perfect. Yeah. It's like almost like bar food. Mm -hmm. Quick, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. I love everything, but let me show you. And the wontons. The wontons. <laughs> I'm a big fan of wontons because yeah. they're such easy finger foods, you know? Mm-hmm. And they're like, you know, this um, Italian pasta tortellini. Mm -hmm. It's wrapped like a tortellini. This is the same thing, just fried. Yeah. Mm. You ever tried frying tortellini? I wonder how that looks. I don't cook. <laughs> I'm, I'm the worst guy, like the worst food critic because I don't cook. Yeah. No, no, it's fine. It's fine. I, I need some time. Well, I'm going to have a little bite. Mm -hmm. It's so good. Everything, I don't know where the heat's coming from, but I'm getting a lot of heat. Well, we do have the bird peppers in there. Mm. Yeah, this doesn't have any pepper, but we have pepper in the sauces, you know, just a little bit. <coughs> okay, it has to be the bird peppers. It's, it's from there. <laughs> don't need the bird uh, peppers. I'll, I'll come down, I'll get one of these and just get some of this. Can't go away. Maybe you ate a pepper and you didn't know. Well, I always eat pepper, so. <laughs> I had a really bad pepper in Nicaragua the mm -hmm. other day. It took me like an hour to lose that heat. Wow. It's the bird that we lose. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, this is like the bird, bird chili. Mm. Because in Guyana, they have the weary, weary peppers. I heard of the weary, weary. Yeah. I don't know, too many peppers over there. Maybe eat a drops. Eat a drops? Yeah. It's sweet. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. mm. This is the drops. So like a coconut macaroon? Mm-hmm. Like a it's like a big coconut biscuit, mm -hmm. right? With cherries. Okay, let me try this. Mmm, mmm. Something to mm -hmm. help you with that heat. Mm -hmm. I have this yeah. dipping into a coffee. Oh. Mmm. Or oh, try. Yeah. Tea. Yeah. Wow, this is so you know, nice. I've never thought about doing that. Mmm. So. Nice dense cookie. Mm -hmm. Crumbly. Very airy. Yeah. Mm. But so cherry? Crunchy on the outside and so slightly soft on the inside. Super soft on the inside. Yeah, it's just the outside is like you have that layer, right? That crispy yeah. layer. But I love coconut and the cherry in here. Mm -hmm. Wow. It's an amazing cookie. So these are for me, right? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> mm -hmm. You're going to go home with dinner. I mean. And breakfast. I'm so happy. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah, it's amazing. Never had cookies like this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, again. It's one of our popular snacks that when you go to a bakery in Trinidad, drops. It's something you get year round. I didn't try corn um, in Trinidad. Yeah, you tried corn, cassava corn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that was the very first recipe I ever did on my channel, and it's my it's my favorite. Cassava corn. Yeah, it's my favorite thing to eat. <laughs> Natasha, thank you so much. This was an incredible meal. Yeah. I mean, thank you for taking the time. Wow, we did like three hours of cooking here. Yeah, and I'm, I'm happy that you came. Um, I'm so happy that you're highlighting my country. Yeah, of course. I mean, I love Trinidad, you know. I, I've been wanting to go for so long. Mm -hmm. Finally made it there, and the food blew my mind. And when you reached out to me, I was like, no, we have to do it. Cooking with Natasha. Check her out. Yeah. YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. I mean, you're everywhere, right? Yeah, I'm everywhere. A million on Facebook. <laughs> Thank you, yes. Um, and, and he just hit the million on YouTube. So it's like, that's such an accomplishment. I, you know, so it's, it's never easy. We just got to keep going, right? Yeah. It's a lot of work. Like, you don't see how much work goes into what we do for a living, but it's a lot of work. And we're passionate about what we do. Exactly. So I'll tell you, uh, I don't know. It's going to be a hard one. Ravioli, ravioli might be the one. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so he loves the, the 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 curry ravioli and the coconut sauce with the shrimp. That's number one. Number one. I, I, everything else is up there too. You know, like I love this. I love this. Of course, the doubles. Even these were amazing. Almost like scones. Yeah, but they don't make you choke up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> They're not that flaky, but uh, but yeah. Thank you so much for everything. Thank you for coming. No, no problem. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment below. Subscribe to my channel, her channel, and we'll see you in the next travel food adventure somewhere around the world. Do I eat more? No, hold off. I'll hold off. <laughs> I'll pack it for him. Please, please. It's too good. <laughs>